Hi, my name is Meg. And my name is Zoe. And we were participants on the winter branch out trip, partnered with the Lemon Project at a few, a few weekends ago. And we worked as volunteers at the Lemon Project to help them create social media posts um, around their symposium theme of four centuries of Black women, where we all did biographical research for Black women throughout um, American history. Yeah, so we're going to show you guys our campaigns that we've created and explain a little bit about why we made them the way that we did. So let's get started. Um, so I created uh, a series of Instagram posts about um, an individual named Angela. Angela was one of the first Africans to be captured and um, forcefully brought to the what is now the United States um, and sold into slavery. Um, so that's her significance being a part of that big group, but obviously her significance was so much more than just that title. Um, so I created a first slide that's kind of eye-catching using an image that was typically used to depict um, African women during uh, from this time period. And um, I also, created other slides that had questions at the top to kind of put that as a focus. So we can see here that we, we study a little bit more about who Angela was, that she was born in the kingdom of Ndongo, which is in Angola. And um, she was baptized under the name Angela. We do not know her real name, but that's the name that's written in records. Um, and along with many others, she was captured by Portuguese enslavers and bound for Veracruz, but eventually brought to Jamestown. Um, we can also see, I, I really wanted to highlight that beyond just being a part of this historic group, um, she also was incredibly important to specific families, obviously um, enslaved nonetheless, but um, she contributed um, to tending to livestock, planting and harvesting tobacco, caring for children um, and other tasks as well. And I wanted to, to put that out there just because I didn't want to diminish it to simply um, her part of being in this first group. And I also wanted to include a little bit about how we know what we know about her. Uh, and I, I put this quote at the bottom because number one, I think that it would catch people's attention, but also it kind of really encapsulates uh, what point that I'm trying to get across and would be a great slide for people to share. Um, the quote is, her, vo her voice is written in the dirt and we are driven to find it. We want to give Angela a voice. And I think overall that was just my goal that I brought into this little campaign. So hopefully I gave Angela a voice too. All right, thank you Meg, that was cool to learn about. All right. Of course, of course. Now Zoe is going to share with us her campaign. I was looking at um, Molly, who is the head of an enslaved woman, the head of an enslaved family belonging to the college. And um, when doing biographical research, this was difficult because that's all we know that she, her name, and that she was the head of an enslaved family at the college. So I wanted to open from this line that I found from the Lemon Project report that says, of the remaining records, many only mention black people in passing. And when they are mentioned, the comments shed more light on the white people involved than on the humanity of African-Americans. And this really made me reflect on how we know so little about the lives of um, early African Americans and what that means for history and what that means we should be doing now. So more about Molly, this is this page is from the bottom of the Bruton and Middlesex Paris Register and it mentions Molly alongside the name of her children um, when they were baptized in 1776 and as I said earlier this is the only record that William Mary has of Molly. Um, we have a name for Molly but we don't have any details about her life, um, but we do at least have a name for her. And there are undoubtedly dozens of 
enslaved women that worked for the college that the college is profited it off of that go unnamed. Um, and when thinking about Molly and those un other unnamed women, I was talking to Dr. Jody Allen, the director of the Lemon Project, and she used this word precarious. Motherhood for enslaved women um, was precarious, thinking about the fact that they spent more time often caring for free children or um, other children that weren't their own. So they didn't have the chance to be a mother and they face the constant threats of violence and family separation. So when creating this post for Molly, I just wanted to include a statement that we should, as I said earlier, reflect on the absence and erasure of these stories and use it as a space to acknowledge um, Black women's fundamental role in shaping American history, especially in the case of Molly, um, early African American women, enslaved women, um, now that we're starting this process of researching more about them and learning more about them. Yeah, and that's something too uh, with Angela, I think it's important to note as well, um, even though the only reason that she's constantly mentioned is because she's only the one of the only individuals that we have a name for among this group. Um, and so whether she was a mother, whether she was a wife, uh, whether she um, had a group of friends or um, she was paired with other individuals or got to know them. Um, that's not information that were that has been uncovered. Um, and I think that's important to recognize that um, that aspect of humanity um, that she had sometimes is just unavailable to us to, to look into. So, um, but that is our, our, our campaigns and uh, we hope that you enjoyed this and are inspired to read them and share some content of your own and do some research of your own.